Welcome. I'm Anthony. This is Bad Idea Metals. And uh, we're going to get into some refining today. I've been talking about gold cornered BGAs for months. And uh, today we're going to refine them. Let's go ahead and weigh these and uh, I'll step you through the process. We got ourselves 278 grams, which is just a, that's a little bit over half a pound. So in other videos, I've gone over how to separate these, these uh, gold cornered BGA tops off of their bottom. Um, we are not going to process the bottom, but even if they're broken, they're still going to be uh, useful to us. So. The gold bond wire is going to go all throughout. They're going to be all sorts of different sizes. We got big ones. We got some medium and small ones right here. The objective of this video is to figure out how much gold bond wire is going to be inside of these. Here you can see that I've got the uh, the film from that TV we tore apart last week. It's going to help me protect my my bench from sulfuric acid. Sulfuric will burn your bench, not catch it on fire, but it'll it'll stain it black and make it make it uh, start to change a little bit here or there. So we want to protect the bench the best we can. So the film is down. Also, if the reaction gets out of control, this pot will help, you know, catch it. So let's go ahead and get our personal protection stuff on. I've got these nice rubber gloves. I'm also wearing oh, something glued my glove shut. Wonder if I had a critter living in all my gear. Gross. The last thing I want to find is a mouse in my glove. Okay. So along with the gloves, we also want to make sure we're wearing stuff that we don't mind if it gets destroyed. Sulfuric will eat through your clothes slowly usually with the with the inclusion of water so you won't even realize that your your clothes are going to be rags until you've washed it as the sulfuric on your clothing responds to the water in your wash it it eats the the cotton threads and whatever else so um, just know you shouldn't wear your favorite shirt or your best pants uh, as you're as you're doing this so I'm wearing a wrinkly old shirt that I paint with all right so, I have a one liter beaker, and these chips aren't all going to fit in here. I mean, they will, but when I add all the acid to it as well, it's just going to encourage a reaction to run away from us here. So, um, we're going to have to do this in parts, but before we do that, I've got a problem. This is 50-50 sulfuric and water. This is a battery refill and it's got too much water in it. So the, uh, the acid needs to be concentrated. So what we're gonna do is we're first going to boil this water out. So let's pour a little bit in. Let's say, I don't know, about 500 milliliters. A little over 500 but you know what we're not being precise on this so we're gonna boil this and concentrate that a little bit I'm about four, four and a half hours in, and uh, it's getting there. So we'll let this run, and uh, hopefully uh, it will do its thing faster now that the reaction's really taken off. You can see, kind of if I get the light to shine through that beaker just right, 
you can kind of see that the reaction does come and go. It goes through a few waves. It, it bubbles up and then it recedes and then it bubbles up again. I've added a little bit more of the sulfuric. Uh, however, that reaction is just taking so long. So I started another experiment. I opened up that inhibited uh, inhibited sulfuric from, from Walmart and uh, I put it in. This little heating unit doesn't heat up very fast at all. And I thought it was actually broken, but if you can see right here, it's actually, it's actually at 122 Celsius. And uh, I mean, it's, it's starting to, to steam up a bit and it's torn apart the, um, the few IC chips that I put in here. So this stuff, this stuff is actually working and it's working better. So I think for the rest of these, I mean, this is pretty sad. I, I know I, I could solve this with bigger beakers and maybe better glassware and better heating. But um, right here, the, the contrast is terrible. There we go, I got it to fix. But right here we've got, we've got the 50-50 battery refill and we have the drain cleaner, which is about 95%, but it's got the inhibitor in it. But the inhibitor isn't stopping it from tearing apart the, the, the caps. And it's not, it's not bubbling up like crazy, but it's doing its job, which is really good. So uh, this, this is doing the reaction, but it's, taking, it's taken over five hours. It's almost at six hours now. And that one has barely been going for like 45 minutes. And so take it for what it is, but this drain cleaner stuff is, is just kicking butt and it's just moving through this stuff really well. So that's it for the six hour update. Um, this stuff builds up enough pressure that you can hear it popping once in a while and you can see the dark liquid up on top and where it has exploded up and it has has uh, collected on the bottom of my viewing glass. So uh, just know that um, when you put these glass uh, viewing glasses on top, you're, you're increasing the pressure and on the beaker that only has that small little opening, um, the, the pouring spout, you're, you're creating a bottleneck um, and it creates pressure down inside. So uh, just be very careful, uh, wear your safety equipment, wear your, your goggles to protect your eyes, and um, yeah, just, just protect yourself if you're gonna, if you're gonna do that. All right, well, that's where I am, six hours in. It's gonna be a long day. Let's take a look. So we still have significant, uh, significant caps left, but they're definitely getting eaten into, which is really good. All right, we switched angles just a bit. You'll see that this hasn't even bubbled up, even in the slightest. But there's something really cool I want to show you. I'm not going to be able to grab it without tweezers. All right, so let's see if we can get this close enough with enough light on it. Oh, I'm going to drop it. I'm really excited because what this shows me is one this drain cleaner stuff with the inhibitor in it doesn't matter that's great and it's about 95% or better the other thing that it shows me is this little guy works all right so I figured something out here you see the messy beaker on the left and the nice and clean beaker on the right you can see that that guy is just cooking right between 80 and 100 and it's been going up and down as I've been turning the heat on and off. But as long as I don't get above 100 and uh, 60, I think, it doesn't look like that. So that beaker, the last time I took its temperature was close to 190 Celsius, which, you know, you'd think you'd get it done faster. I have to say that uh, these chips are actually showing more response like you can see the gold trying to liberate itself on some of these and like right there I don't know if you can see it but that corner poking up you can see the gold leads uh, sticking out that is awesome and I'm not getting all that that 
nasty foam stuff. Like this beaker is perfectly clean. In fact, the water is almost red. This, this acid is almost red. So this is much more effective to keep it down below 100 than to pretty much boil it. Uh, all that does is make a whole bunch of smoke and you're gonna have to go and find all the gold contacts out afterwards. So not being a pro at this, um, in fact, I'm mostly pretty new to this. I'm, I'm much more inclined to say, keep the temp low. And yeah, it could take a little bit longer, maybe, but you're not gonna end up with all that choking white smoke that you get off the top of, I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. This, there's a lot of white smoke coming off of that other beaker. And it's the, it's the sulfuric burning off or boiling off. Whereas this beaker has been really nice, calm and easy to work with. So I don't know, I'm, I'm more inclined to just keep it low. Let it go at its own speed here, but uh, don't get above 100 if you don't need to. So I'm gonna have to finish in a second video, but let's take a look and see what we got. So some of the gold uh, leads I've actually seen slip through this mesh. All right, so now we're going to uh, pour this off a little bit, slowly. We poured some of it off earlier. <clears throat> the gold bond wire is really fine and it can slip through your, your screen. Try not to let any of it get away. Oh, you can see it. Some bond wires down in there. You can see a few very thin little strands. So we'll have to, we'll have to get those out. So you can see some gold bond wire is detached and is in that sludge there. And I don't doubt that some has fallen through. So we'll keep this bucket for a little bit and try to get what we can out of it. Let's pour our other beaker. This is the one that we went more slowly with. Some pretty fun looking things in here. Can you see those? Right there, that's what we're after. Those are gold leads right there. Nice gold bond wires. Let's see if we can fish one out. All right, so this is what we're after. And uh, that's just from two of them. They're really small. By comparison, they still have acid on them, but I'll, I'll get my fingertip down here so you can see. This is just a, a very small little guy. Anyway, so we're working hard to get these out. You can see that there's still a few in there. And there's actually still quite a few that haven't let go yet. But as you look close in the in the mixture of of this mess down here, you can see right there. You can see a whole grip. You can see a whole group of bond wires that have made it down into my my screen. So not sure how many pass through the screen, but that's what we're doing. That's what we're trying to get. And uh, you can see we still have a long way to go and it's taken us a few days to get to this point. So the slow and steady approach, I never bubbled over. However, slow and steady has been a few days and I was hoping to get done by today, I haven't even done the refining with nitric yet. So we're gonna stop the video here pretty soon, but uh, we are succeeding. It's just taking a long time. But that is really cool. So like everything else on this channel, my first attempts seem to uh, fall short just a little bit because of expectation and execution. So um, I've, 
I thought I knew exactly what I was doing. I've done enough watching other videos. I've done enough looking it up online. So I was hoping that I had this all down. Um, so my, my thoughts on this are either my temperature wasn't high enough, which means that the reactions are gonna get out of control and a, a, taller, a taller flask or a taller beaker would help or the concentration or the type of sulfuric is the wrong, uh, wrong approach. The fact that it works so well at the low temperatures tell me that I believe that the sulfuric is gonna be just fine, but I just need to figure out that sweet spot for the, the temperature and how long it needs to sit. I'm excited because that's gold and uh, we're gonna get this figured out. I'm open to comments. I know that there's a hundred different ways to do this, um, either right or wrong, and uh, I know I've got a lot of helpers out there who watch this channel and I'm sure I'll hear all the things I've done incorrectly or I could do better. So please let me know uh, how you would do it um, and we'll, we'll figure this out. If you are entertained by this video, please like and subscribe. Um, tune in next week and I hope that we've got all the rest of these, these uh, IC chips processed and we've moved on to the nitric phase of the refinement. And uh, I really want to see how much uh, gold is in here. So I'm hoping to do the weigh-in of a gold button next week. So unfortunately, we didn't get there today. But uh, we'll get there soon. Have a good night.